CCTV 101, Installation and Application Guidelines for Cameras. Where should I install my cameras? Typically we want to place them up high, where they can't be tampered with, moved, or pointed in another direction. Keep them under shelter, away from sources of elements, etc. And point them away from light. Sources of light are just like having a flashlight blinding you in your face. A camera can be blinded by uh, HID lighting or other sources of light, etc. And of course, keep them away from the obstructions trees, etc., that we have to worry about being in the way of what we're trying to see. So camera placement is more than just putting cameras up. We want to make sure we place them in the correct area, right application, the right lighting, and the right field of view or the right angle. And of course, have the right resolution that we want to record. But think like a photographer. So sometimes we want to see things from up high, sometimes from down low, a wide angle, or a narrower angle. Resolution. As we can see here, all different types of resolution that cameras can record in, more commonly today at the 1080p level or the 720p level. And those are the pixels that we're dealing with. How those actually range or show as far as a picture size is what we're going to show next. And so what you start to look at is a 1080p picture is 920 by 1080p pixels. And of course the 720p is 1280 by 720. And of course the larger picture, the more pixels we have, allows us to go in and do a digital zoom after the fact and see more detail, uh, especially from further away. Now we are starting to get into products that are 4K, and with 4K resolution, that's four times the pixels of 1080p. So if we need to look you know, a couple blocks out and see a license plate or a street sign or some kind of detail, that's why we'd want to use 4K. Frames per second. Frames per second is the amount of frames shown in one second. So Looking back at uh, older films, one second at a time is, is 24. Uh, old black and white films or home movies were 16 to 18 frames per second. Um, and of course, DVDs are about 30 frames per second. Sometimes we want to record at 30 frames per second, but 15 typically in an HD or high res image is often more than enough, unless you have a lot of movement. Understanding lighting. Um, different types of lighting from different color temperatures of lamps can affect the picture that you see. So. Pay attention to what you're trying to achieve and of course how that result in, in the light metal lighting you're using. Uh, things like low pressure sodium lights that are often by uh, marinas, etc. Uh, will drastically change what you're going to see or the colors, etc. within the picture. Lighting tips. Best results is never to point a camera towards a lighting source. So sunrise, sunset, headlights, uh, HID lighting, uh, sports lighting, all those types of things. Try to work around those things to see the best you can or use technologies such as wide dynamic range to compensate uh, for those types of applications. When placing cameras under eaves troughs, take those cameras and typically, if you're going to use a bullet camera, which is often preferred because you've got the shield on it, you can put those right at the very back towards the building. When using a dome, pull that right out to the very front so we're not getting IR blowback or or uh, it's, it's shining off the, the softening and coming back into the camera. So using camera placement and trying to think about how those IRs or IR illuminators inside the camera are going to perform when they're actually mounted. For the same factor, putting domes on walls. Um, if we're going to put domes on walls, we should probably use the proper brackets or accessories sold with it. And be careful when you try to crank over the actual gimbal that you're not going to create a hot spot of light at nighttime on the wall that's going to blow back into the camera. So adjust your field of view properly. And of course we do have bullet cameras that are often better in those applications if they're put it up at high angles or high, high places where we can't reach them. Um, otherwise, if you can reach it, you probably don't want to use a bullet camera. But these do have shields, which of course can protect against elements, etc. And they do a great job. Um, definitely something you're going to have on, on the side of buildings or on poles. Mounting height. What camera height should I use? Um, typically, both heights if you're thinking of two, um, because one, one camera will show maybe movement in a retail store of how someone's moving or what maybe what's sliding into their pocket, but a camera down lower is going to give you an angle of something, again, maybe going to their pocket, but also their face and what they're wearing and all those types of things. So having more cameras, the better, to cover off those types of applications. How are you going to mount your cameras? Look for the optional accessories, whether that's a mounting back box, a pendant, a cap, a uh, you know pole mount adapter, uh, any of those types of things. 
So figure it out before you actually go and order your product so you get all your accessories and everything you need at the job site versus having to order it later and wait for it to arrive. Understanding field of view. So field of view. Uh, this correlates with lenses and chip sizes or CCD sizes. So essentially a 2.8 millimeter lens uh, based on um, a, a third chip size is going to give us a 97 degree field of view. It's a very wide field of view. And a 50 millimeter gives us a 5.3 uh, uh, field of view. So based, based on this chart here, we show you the size of the CCD chip versus the size of the lens and the field of view you're going to get. So that, of course there are fixed cameras out there, more commonly at 3.6 millimeter lenses, um, that give you, say, up to roughly 90 degrees field of view. And those are going to be your standard cameras. And that's great because we see a lot of information. So if we put that in a corner, we're going to see from wall to wall on your standard square room or rectangular room. But sometimes we want to see something up a little bit closer. So if we want to get that facial shot with a license plate uh, or more detail, or we don't want to record uh, you know, walls, we want to get down and get the information we want to get. There you may want to use a very focal lens. And a very focal lens will allow us to, to adjust that on site um, where you can actually bring that field of view, say, from 90 degrees down to 20 degrees to get the actual picture that we're actually looking for. And today we have a lot of cameras that have motorized very focal, which allows us to actually do that remotely um, through software and adjust that field of view and of course the focus for that. So in this picture what we show in the top left is a 70 degree field of view where we're seeing a lot of information in a warehouse, carts, all that information, etc. And if you look at the bottom right, we end up bringing that down to a narrow field of view, I think at about 29 degrees, and that's getting all the information in the cart. So if we're really trying to get you know, a picture of a vehicle coming through a gate, well, we probably want to use that very focal camera and adjust that down to that narrow field of view to get the information we want. One of the most common uh, unused features that is probably the most important features that I, I'm, I believe is why do I need wide dynamic range? So we show two pictures here, one with a lot of shadowing because we have the light coming in through the doors, creating shadowing on the counter and overexposure past the doors where we can't see out the doors. In the bottom right, we see everything because we're actually using a technology called WDR or wide dynamic range. And this is another feature, or the same feature, used again in an ATM machine where the person is blinded out at the bank machine. Of course, the guy that's possibly going to mug her or rob her, um, we can make out clearly when we're using wide dynamic range. So use this feature anywhere you have sunrise, sunset, uh, lights pointed towards the cameras, headlights, anytime your camera's pointed at a window or a door, an overhead door, a warehouse door, any of those types of things use wide dynamic range as a feature. IP ratings of cameras. This is an internet protocol IP. We're talking about IP as far as rating and weatherproof of, of the actual housing. So in the case you'll find most cameras that we're using are going to be IP65, 66, or 67. And what you end up seeing is the first number is uh, designating dust uh, and of course the liquid on the, on the second uh, number. So an IP65 is going to keep out uh, you know, moisture and of course dust. And those are the things we want to keep uh, aware of when we're doing our uh, installs and not using, say, cameras that are directly for outdoors, or sorry, directly for indoors and using them outdoors because they're not going to last, they're going to fill the bugs and dirt and dust. Use the proper camera for the proper application. Thank you from WestRep Solutions.